You see, it wasn't technically named after the historic town in England, but rather after a town that was. Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond. And one of those memos pertains to place names. All across America, there are places bearing the mark of countless other cultures, including Native American, French, German, Spanish and Founding Father. Was that a culture? I don't know, but there are plenty of places named after them. Um, anyway, of particular interest to this channel are the towns and cities named after those of my homeland. Up and down New England and various states across the land, the United States is totally and utterly a little bit peppered with English namesakes, such as, you know, Boston, Massachusetts, Manchester, New Hampshire, and England, Arkansas. Invariably, such names were given by English settlers who sought to both honour their home cities and to colonise the New World. And while the YouTube algorithm wouldn't look kindly on me if I addressed all 28 billion cases in one video, there are very select few that went above and beyond with a whole naming convention thing. You see, recently something quite extraordinary came to my attention and I can't believe I hadn't noticed it until now. I was just enjoying another typical Friday night, trying to figure out whether or not the Census Bureau was right to classify Delaware as part of the South, when I realised something funny about that very state. Delaware's capital of Dover was located in Kent County. Now, not only is Dover, Delaware named after the famous town in England's south coast, but that very same town is located in the English county of Kent. In other words, the two cities shared the same county name, so excuse me while I add that to the pub quiz. What are the chances? Well, it turns out that they're actually quite fair to middling. You see, after doing a bit of digging, I finally discovered Atlantis. No, wait, no, that's a different video. The FBI knows it's all top secret. No, I discovered that Dover, Delaware was not alone. Up in America's northeast, there exists a handful of other Englishly named cities that bear the same county as their English counterparts. Sure, US counties might be less generous with the shire suffix, and English counties might not let you know their counties by adding on the word county, but keep in mind, Shire comes from the Old French to mean, you guessed it, county. So Warwickshire, for example, is just another way of saying Warwick County. By the way, there's one of those in Virginia. And so without further shampoo, here are eight cities that took English naming to a whole new level. The English wartime songstress Vera Lynn famously sang There'll be bluebirds over the white cliffs of Dover, which was always an unusual lyric because bluebirds are indigenous exclusively to the Americas and not the south coast of England. It turns out that the song's American lyricist was unaware of this when he handed over the words to his eventual composer, who, by a freak cosmic coincidence, was named Kent. Anyway, 260 years earlier, William Penn was busy casually drawing up the Delaware colony. He ordered the planning and implementation of a court town, and the town of Dover, named after that of pretend bluebirds fame, was finally laid out in 1717 in Kent County. Meanwhile, five years later, more than 300 miles away, another name was being mixed into the source. Not just a misspelt P.G. Woodhouse character, and not just a magic box of mispronunciations. Worcester, Massachusetts is a city of 180,000 people, was incorporated as such in 1848, and was named after the city in the West Midlands. And if these nomenclatural similarities were not enough, Worcester, Massachusetts was chosen in 1731 as the Shire Town of Worcester County, where it still serves as the county seat to this very day. Over on the other side of the pond, in the year 927 AD, the county of Worcestershire was rolled up into the unified Kingdom of England, and the city of Worcester remains there more than a millennium after. And while the word Worcester, not to mention Worcestershire, is written quite differently from how it's spoken, at least both countries remain consistent on the spelling, unlike our next entry. Hartford, the capital city of Connecticut, having been incorporated as a city in 1784, was named in honour of the hometown of one of the English Puritans who settled it. Samuel Stone, along with Thomas Hooker, travelled to the Dutch trading post House of Hope in 1636 and started a settlement just north of it. Originally called Newtown, that settlement became Hartford after the city in England and Samuel Stone, believe it or not, bears the rare distinction of having been born in one Hartford and dying in the other. Now you might notice that the 
two cities bear a different spelling, likely owing to a lack of spelling standardization at the time and before. Moreover, residents of the English Hartford continue to drop the T during pronunciation. It's a funny old world, isn't it? But spelling and pronunciation differences aside, the Hartfords join this list because they too share the same county name, that of Hartford County and of Hertfordshire. And as with the first two entries on this list, the American city is home to more people than its English equivalent. The same could not be said of our next two entries. Southampton, a port city on England's south coast that might be most famous to Americans for being the departure point of the ill-fated Titanic, whose collision with an iceberg late on April 14, 1912, caused it to sink almost three hours later. For decades, and I might go to hell for this, it was lost in the pond. But almost 300 years earlier, in 1640, the city of Southampton achieved something that the Titanic never would. It made it to New York. You see, on Long Island's Suffolk County, amid the Hamptons is the town of Southampton, a city of just 56,000. It's considerably smaller than its English counterpart, and it's also not the Southampton in question. That accolade goes to the considerably smaller still, Southampton, Massachusetts, with a population just shy of 6,000. This decidedly non-coastal town was incorporated into Hampshire County, Massachusetts, in 1775. Now, even though Southampton, England, is indeed situated in a county called Hampshire, pedants among us might point out that Hampshire County, Massachusetts isn't exactly its equivalent because technically, you know, Hampshire County is just another way of writing Hamp County County, which while redundant is close enough. And speaking of close, our next entry is just 30 miles up the road. Windsor, Massachusetts, a small town of just 899 people found its way onto this list Sort of by accident, you see, it wasn't technically named after the historic town in England, but rather after a town that was, Windsor, Connecticut, which, because the universe is a cyclical beast of a thing, borders a little place you may have heard of called Hartford. Indeed, Windsor, Massachusetts' naming was down to the fact that early settlers emigrated from the Connecticut town, which might suggest it was no accident that Windsor, Massachusetts was incorporated into Berkshire County. After all, Berkshire, or indeed Berkshire, as it's pronounced back home, because that's just what we do, is the home of Windsor Castle, and with it, the town in which it stands. Meanwhile, in both countries, Berkshire or Berkshire is just one of several counties beginning with a B. Let's take a look at another one. From the smallest town on this list to the smallest state, Rhode Island acquired the town of Bristol after King George II got bored and transferred it from Massachusetts in 1747. Named after the much larger city in southwest England, the two places nonetheless have a few things in common. They're both called Bristol, obviously. They both have, you know, ports, and they both belong to a county called, well, Bristol. And Bristol County was also created during that 1747 transfer from Massachusetts, and indeed was named after the aforementioned Shire Town. Meanwhile, its English namesake has the rather strange distinction of having a city and a county that not only share the same name, but are also the exact same place, as in, this is both the city and the county, even if historically the city had also belonged to the nearby counties of Gloucestershire and Somerset. Oh, and on the subject of history... In American terms, the city of York, Pennsylvania is like a treasure trove of history. Not only does it include four historic districts, but it has been referred to as, and I quote, an architectural museum owing to its downtown assortment of bygone buildings. In this regard, it has much in common with the English city of York, though the latter, of course, is completely and utterly a little bit older. Forged in the fires of Roman conquest, the city came to pass in 71 AD and as such is starting to show signs of wrinkling, but aren't we all? That said, the two cities have more in common than just old drinking taverns. For a start, York, Pennsylvania is nicknamed the White Rose City, after the rose famously adopted by the House of York. And secondly, of course, the cities are housed in Yorkshire and York County, the latter of which is sandwiched between Adams County, see Founding Fathers comment, and some other county that we'll not discuss until 20 seconds from now. You see, anybody who's watched this channel for a while will know that York is my absolute favourite city in the whole of England and that my brother Matt went to university there. You might also know that in an act of unforgivable treachery, I attended university in the city of its rival.
That's right, Lancaster. The English variant of Lancaster is where I learned all about the Wars of the Roses, a series of bloody battles between the Houses of York and Lancaster, the White Rose and the Red Rose, Henry Tudor and that guy what turned up in a car park in Leicester. Like York, Lancaster is rich with history, housing the execution site of the so-called Pendle Witches, hordes of historic watering holes and a Roman bathhouse I once accidentally slept in. Lancaster, Pennsylvania, meanwhile, is one of the oldest inland towns in the United States, planned as early as 1681 by William Penn and incorporated as a borough in 1742. It was briefly the capital of the United States for one day. And in an act of homage taken to extreme new heights, the city bears a seal containing the image of a drunk student sleeping in a Roman bath. No, wait, it contains an image of the Red Rose of the House of Lancaster. Moreover, it is the seat of Lancaster County, just as Lancaster, England, is the county town of Lancashire. Oh, and did I mention, Lancaster, Pennsylvania is just 24 miles from a little city called York. The two cities, and indeed their counties, are separated by little more than the Sus... Uh, try that again. The Susquehanna River, and they even come together once a year to fight it out over a baseball series dubbed The Wars of the Roses. And that's it for this episode of Lost in the Pond. Let me know in the comments below if you live in one of the cities mentioned in this video and whether or not you knew that it shared a county name with its English predecessor. In the meantime, for more intriguing British American facts, don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Until next time, cheerio. Thank you for watching this episode of Lost in the Pond. Don't forget to hit my stupid little face to subscribe and please share this video with the world. Hit me up on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook and if you would like to support this channel please do so at patreon.com slash lostinthepond.